I'll start the ball rolling with our questions today. Uh, my first question is going to be for the film's director, David Yates. Uh, David, hello. Um, you have been responsible for the last four Harry Potter movies. How does it feel to you being the one bringing this, the most successful franchise in, in movie history to a close? Uh, it's a great privilege to be working with probably the world's best cast and the world's best story. And uh, I feel very, very lucky. And like Daniel, I think one of the things I'm going to miss are, are the people involved. You know, we've had a tremendous family behind this series of films, uh, in, behind and in front of the camera. And I think there's something we've all shared that we'll all we'll sort of keep, you know, something unique that's between all of us. We've all been to the moon together, as it were. And that's very special, and I think that'll endure for many years, I hope. Um, but it's been a, a wonderful experience. I uh, also have a question uh, for Emma and, uh, and Rupert. I mean, Daniel there speaking about how you've worked together so closely for so long. What's it going to be like not returning to a set of Harry Potter uh, on a yearly basis? Yeah, I, I don't think I still have really come to, to terms with that. Um, after we finished, like, a, a year ago now, um, I have felt a little bit lost without it, really, and not really knowing what to do with myself. And um, it's been such a constant part of my life, and um, to suddenly have that kind of just suddenly come down to this kind of one film, it's 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 yeah, it is quite sad, and um, I'm really genuinely gonna, gonna miss it and miss everyone. Yeah, it's funny. Um, we're sort of used to having gaps in between each of the films, you, usually sort of five or six months, and then. Um, after this, this last film ended, around that point, I sort of started getting like this itch that was like, okay, I'm ready to go back now. And then I realized I wasn't. And uh, it was, that was really the moment that I had to come to terms with. It's, it's so difficult to process. Um, but I think, you know, Dan, Rupert and I have all moved on to other projects and we've been working really hard on on you know what's next for us and and we've learned so much during the making of these films and i think we're all just excited to put it into practice and and do more good work thank you uh, oh we have a question over here thank you hi i'm from bbc radio just want to ask the director uh, given that i'm over here sorry on the and um, given that this is the most successful film franchise of all time are you perhaps a little bit disappointed that the Harry Potter films haven't received very much recognition in the Oscars or BAFTA time? Do you know, I think we've all made peace with that in a way. There are so many things to enjoy being part of this whole um, series of films. Most of all, the affection of the fans and the fact that there's a global community um, who follow these stories with great passion. If you go down to Trafalgar Square right now, you'll see a mini Glastonbury of people <laughs> from all over the world who've been camping out in the rain for the last three nights. And, and that's, that's more of a compensation than lots of trophies. So I think we're cool about that. Um, that's somehow more important, I'd say. Okay, we've got a, a question in the front row. I think uh, Rob Driscoll here. Thank you, if you'd put the microphone, Rob. Thanks. A uh, question for Rupert and Emma again. Um, which film in this series of eight would you say uh, provided you with the, the biggest turning point for your character in terms of um, ch child to adult or transition or maybe just learning a big lesson? Um, <laughs> I think for me it was um, these last two, I think, part one um, was... Um, where I kind of found of the, the just yeah I mean Ron has always been quite a complicated guy I think and um, in part one and, and, and part two and particularly part one I think we, we saw kind of a much more kind of insecure kind of uh, kind of paranoia and this kind of jealousy and, and stuff and, and yeah I, I found kind of these two films I found kind of Ron the most kind of interesting really and um, yeah, just, just, I mean, in the previous films, um, uh, kind of, Ron's been this kind of, kind of loyal, just kind of scaredy cat, really. He's kind of, kind of screaming all the time. And, um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm really, uh, these two films, I think, I've, 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 I've felt like I've got, had the most to kind of get, get my teeth into. Um, similar answer to Rupert. Um, 
these last two films were the first time I found myself doing something that I really had never done before in my own life or had any way that I could relate to. So, for example, I have no idea what it's like to be tortured. Um, and I have no idea what it's like, you know, trying to play a 20, you know, 20 years older and what it might like be like to say goodbye to my children at a railway station and, um, mm. you know, just really found myself in positions that I sort of, how do I, I can't even imagine what this would be like. So found myself really, um, really stretched in the last two and also physically, um, you know, we did huge amounts of stunts and running around and um, <laughs> Uh, so that was that was um, you know that was a big learning curve for me. And I just wanted to add to the add to the question that was asked to David before. Um, I don't think there are you know more the Harry Potter fans and Harry Potter readers are these books are just so loved and the fans of these books were the most discerning critics. And the fact that we've that they've really embraced the series that we made and there are pretty much you know no complaints. Everyone seems to really you know, love and think they're true to that. I just don't think there's any better reward than that, than that we satisfied them. So, that's... I have a, I have a question here for uh, Robbie Coltrane. Um, Hagrid uh, is clearly one of the many iconic characters. Sorry, Robbie, it's me over here. Right. Uh, on this side, I, you're right, hello. Um, what are you gonna most miss most about playing Hagrid and being part of these films? Well, the journey between being a man of 50 and 60 is very different from between 10 and 20. Can I just say that? Um, <laughs> the great thing about pa playing Hagrid, I guess, was that Hagrid was a thoroughly good man. And I think it's probably the first time in my entire career I've ever played a thoroughly good man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I played gangsters, prostitutes, um, transvestites, <laughs> murderers, everything you can imagine. Uh, it was the first time I've ever played a, a man who was thoroughly good. Uh, and a, a thoroughly good man for 10 years. I, I, one, um, one of the characters that all the, the young people completely trusted. I mean, I mean totally trusted. Because he was a good chap. So that, that was a bit of an eye-opener for me. You can imagine how much action was required there. <laughs> <laughs> if you know me. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I really enjoyed every minute of it, I have to say. And... Uh, we were having a laugh the other day about schools out forever, you know, that song. And, um, you know, some, some people think, well, schools out, that's fine, we can go and, go and do what we like. But there's also part of you that thinks, well, schools out, then something strange and wonderful has kind of gone. So, Am I being terribly sentimental? <laughs> <laughs> allowed to be. Gentlemen, if you could hold that mic just at the, in the front row for the moment. There's a lady in the front row here, and then there's a, there's a couple of gentlemen in the middle we'll come to. Go ahead. Hi, um, I'm from uh, the new paper in Singapore. This question is for Emma. Could you um, compare the kiss you had with Ron and the one you had with Harry? <laughs> I, um, Daniel Radcliffe, and would you have liked to kiss Tom Felton? Should have seen this one coming. Um, right, so this is really difficult. I've got to try and be diplomatic. Um, okay. Well, Dan isn't here, so um, <laughs> maybe that makes it slightly easier. Uh, well, obviously, kissing kissing Dan, uh, kissing Harry for that scene, you know, it's a figment of Ron's imagination and the worst possible thing that he could ever imagine. So, the kiss obviously had to be passionate, uh, I was half naked and covered in silver paint. So that was pretty awkward. Um, kissing Rupert, uh, <laughs> also <laughs> awkward. Uh, we'd just been soaked by an enormous bucket of water, which was sort of perched, which we, which we had to pretend we didn't know was going to hit us, but we knew was coming. And that was also equally awkward and weird. So both strange situations to be in. Um, both were complete gentlemen, and uh, you know, very. It was, it was. It's obviously hard to put our personal history to one side, considering that we did grow up together. But um, 
I don't think they'll mind me saying that, you know, one, if you, once you've done it sort of four or five times, it gets quite, like, kissing gets quite boring, uh, <laughs> genuinely. Uh, so it got, it definitely got easier. Um, and, yeah, that's it. And Tom, <laughs> who's sitting right here. Uh, um, Thanks, Jason. His beautiful girlfriend is sitting in the left-hand corner of the room, so... <laughs> No, I don't think so. My 12-year-old my self, absolutely. But my 21-year-old self, no. <laughs> Daryl, could we have a question from you? And then there's a gentleman down here with the, the shirt. Uh, go ahead. A uh, question for David Heyman. Um, when this project began so long ago and you were faced with putting seven and, in the end, eight films on, has it actually turned out better than you could have ever imagined uh, in the case that you've kept all the cast together? Uh, apart from uh, Richard Harris, sadly. Um, has it been, a, been better than you could ever imagine? <clears throat> well, when it began, I had no idea that 10 years on we'd be sitting having this conversation. So it's, it, it, at that time, it was just, I was, we were making the first film, um, or when I read the first book, you know, I hoped to make a film, and, and, and in my mind, if I was lucky, it might be The Railway Children or Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I had no idea that it would be what it's become, and um, in so many ways, it's been better than I could ever have imagined. Um, the journey itself, as David talked about before, the family that was made, um, and the work that everybody did. It's been you know, an amazing journey and one that has been full of surprises and that I don't think anybody could have expected to continue and end, frankly, in this way. A gentleman just here, thank you. Hi, I'm Jan from Belgium. I have a question for Emma. Um, how much pressure is on you being a role model for so many children? You, you will always stay a little bit Hermione for them, I, I think. So, so how much pressure is, is on you to be the good, the good girl? Um, I think Hermione is such an incredible young woman and um, sort of growing up alongside her definitely pushed me um, and I think she made me a better person and she made me work harder just as a result of sort of comparing myself literally with her every day. Um, I feel so privileged to play her, um, to have got to be her. Um, in terms of the role model thing, I think um, someone uh, who I admire very much said to me recently, the cleanest way to live as a human being and as an artist is to be true to yourself and always honest and that that's the best way to live and I will try to do that first and foremost and then secondly if that makes me you know a role model then that's great and it's very flattering um, but yeah it's it's it's, it's been amazing and I feel very lucky to have got to play her and be associated with her. So. I, have a, uh, I have a question for everyone, uh, every one of the uh, cast and filmmakers. Uh, we will go down the line because that is probably easier and uh, not as confusing. Uh, your favourite line that uh, your character ever said in uh, any of the films that you starred in. Uh, I thought we'd start at this end uh, with the wonderful Nick Moran. Hello, beautiful. <laughs> That was it, that's the line that I signed. I did uh, uh, when I get autographs. I creeped quite a lot of people out with that and I was very, very pleased it stayed in the film. So, yes, that's mine. So creepy. Um, <clears throat> well, for me, um, it was probably one of the first lines that I uttered in uh, the whole series of films, way back in number one, uh, as Professor Flitwick, Wingardium Leviosa, <laughs> I think for me, would be, would be the one. Uh, and it's the one everyone wants me to do when I, when I meet them, so. Uh, yeah, I often hold little charms classes for little groups of fans, so uh, well, you could do one now if you want. Do you want to do a charms class? You all have your wands with you? Yeah, good. We'll leave it there then. Um, I don't have many lines, uh, but one of them is... <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I, like when, I like it when she says, uh, don't call me Nymphadora and gets really angry at Mad-Eye Moody. You're my hair changing colour. 
Um, I don't remember hardly anything I ever said in the whole movie. <laughs> um, I, I'd, I'd say there's just one word that sums up my feelings of playing the character and trying to make a wand feel like an AK-47 for the whole series of films, which is ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, my other favourite line is Boggart. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't have any lines either, but I do remember thinking, well, this shouldn't be too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I think all Luna's lines are sort of winners. She's always says something funny. Um, but I like you're just as sane as I am because uh, just, it just gives no comfort at all to whoever she says it to. Uh, my favourite line is actually one of Daniel's because my first day's work, one of my first shots was walking away from Dumbledore's desk and I said to Chris Columbus, oh, I really love an exit line. And he said, well, let's go again. We'll shoot something and just make something up. And we didn't tell Daniel. And uh, who was only, you know, waist high. And I turned around to him, unexpectedly to him, and I said, uh, let us hope Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. And he looked up at me and he puffed his chest out and he said, don't worry, I will be. <laughs> Which is pretty impressive for a 12-year-old. And he's, uh, he's stayed that impressive ever since. Um, I think the, uh, my favourite line that I got to say, which I, which I haven't seen yet, so I hope it's still it in. <laughs> is the moment that she stands up in the Forbidden Forest and says, dead. Um, yeah, <clears throat> we've all been blessed with some great lines, definitely. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed Draco's line when he's being carried away after being attacked by uh, Buckbeak. My father will hear about this. That's one of my, uh, <laughs> my favourites, for sure. <laughs> Producers don't have lines. <laughs> Uh, well, the only line that I can remember is, um, I can touch you now. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite line. Uh, <laughs> my favorite line is, I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed, or worse, expelled. <laughs> And I remember just getting so much joy out of saying that as a, I think I would have been 11 or 12, and uh, it just seemed like the wittiest, cleverest uh, line, and yeah, it was great. <laughs> Actually, when you said that, I still remembered the line that I say after that. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to sort her priorities. Which I so, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that just really just popped into my head. Um, yeah, it's hard to think of it. I don't know, it's, it's all kind of a blur. I remember saying, uh, I say bloody a lot. No, I always got a thrill from saying bloody because it was kind of like a, a rude word. <laughs> so, yeah. There's a, there's a very good line you say just after um, Draco blasts Emma in the last film and you, you shout as you're chasing Draco, that's oh, yeah. my girlfriend, you numpties. <laughs> yeah. Which is really sweet. Oh, I think my favourite one has got to be, not my daughter, you bitch. <laughs> so incongruous. I couldn't believe Mrs. Weasley said it when I read it. I couldn't believe it, so it's fabulous to say. I guess my fa favourite was in, in, in Diagon Alley in the first one saying, You're Harry Potter. You're the one who got away from you know who. <laughs> my second favourite was in a Bond movie. He <laughs> stuck a 45 to my head and I said, can't you just say hello like anybody else? <laughs> well, I, I hardly ever knew my lines in the film anyway. So, <laughs> so, so were the, the ones I did remember. Um, but the one you're going to see tomorrow, uh, my favourite line is when I, I appear as a ghost on the station platform and I say, Harry. And I felt like crying. That's my favourite How do I follow that? <laughs> um, I think it was just a line that really, for, for ten years, really summed up Neville. And it was in number two. And it was just when he's hanging from the chandelier and he says, Why is it always me? <laughs> um, I probably have to choose my first ever line that actually wasn't in the script and only happened on the... Um, Platform nine and three quarters with good luck to Harry. That was um, the beginning, and I ended on the same set, the end of the journey, so it was a complete cycle. 
I've actually got two. The first one would be in the first movie when I sounded like I'd just swallowed a load of helium um, <laughs> and said, honestly, woman, you call yourself our mother. Because I remember being really excited because if I actually said that to my mum, I'd probably be ducking for a smack. So, um, <laughs> And my second one would be Mischief Managed, which I think sums up the characters pretty well. Um, I think my favourite line would be in Deathly Hallows Part 1 when Harry and Ginny have just kissing and uh, George creeps right behind him and just goes, morning. <laughs> it's, probably, yeah, it's probably the most uncomfortable moment, I think, for Harry to, to go through. Uh, Nat says she had no lines, and I've got fewer lines than Nat, so I don't know where that puts me. Uh, I'd say Mad Eye's dead, and that was my dad, so that was good fun. <laughs>